Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you three more life hacks. Two of them from the Dollar Tree. One is just requested. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is the next hack. When I wanted to show you, this is like a hack or a decorating trick or how to get cheap and inexpensive or to change out the core easy. Any of those will work for this. Whatever brought you here, welcome. Um, first thing I want to show you is, this is about window treatments. We're going to hang a valance, but we're going to hang a scarf. So as you can see here, what I had this hack, this previous hack was, these are shower curtain rings that didn't fit on my shower curtain rod. And they had little red trucks on them from Christmas. So all I did was hang them through the loops of this particular sh curtain. Some have fallen out since and hung them over this rod. This rod I got on clearance from a big store. What would, would have been, oh no, from Hobby Lobby. That's exactly where it was from. Um, so it had like a, what it would have been like a $23 curtain rod with these glass finials on the end. These finials I got from one of my resources that I've shared with you in the past. It's Bryling Catalog Outlet. It used to be, but it's BC Outlet and um, dot com. And then what they do is they sell from the catalog, like the group family of catalogs they have. The Women Within, um, King Size Male. I think they changed King Size Mail to Big Living, and then they have Bry Lane Home, um, which is one of their resources. And I bought, these finials were 99 cents a set, and I literally like, if I could just show you how many sets of the finials that I have between the wood ones, these metal ones, other shaped metal ones, I've used them for everything, handles on cloches, I've put them on end of broken curtain rods, and all different types of resources. But I had these, and because finials are usually universal, I knew that they would fit, which is great. The color of the rod is a little bit like more oil rub bronze than these are black, but it looks good, close enough to me. So we're gonna take that curtain rod, now that the curtain's off of it. Um, I have the hooks already hanging in the bathroom. This is just the curtain rod system that I've had for a while. I just bought a new rod because the other one we brought from New York, and like my, say my window is 36 inches, that curtain rod expanded to 36 inches. So it was like, you couldn't even pull it the tiniest bit and it would come apart. This one was longer, this one goes to 42 inches, so I'm fine. So I found these kind of hooks. I found them really inexpensively. They are cheaply made, don't get me wrong. I feel like I wanna say that it was the 99 cent only store or the Dollar General, but they were really inexpensive. You usually get like a set of seven um, because of how you can hang them evenly on the curtain, which I'll share with you too. Um, these ones were from um, these ones from Bed Bath and Beyond. They were on clearance. I actually have a whole bag of them, <laughs> different shapes and sizes that I've used in the past that I just saved. But I want to share with you that these ones are super inexpensive. These are from Walmart. I've only found them in brass. They're called Cafe Clips. They're one inch diameter. I think they're like $2.97. You can also use these, but today we're gonna to use these. First of all, these are already painted black and they do have a little bit different of a system. This one sort of has like an alligator clip. And this, if you never used them before, the whole thing, you pinch the circle and I don't know, you can really see it, but you pinch the circle and it opens up. Um, the reason I don't want to use these is if you can just see on this particular curtain, I should say, you could see it's got like teeth. Do you see that? Is it showing up? Um, maybe if I hold it back far away and zoom in, it's got teeth. And because this is a really inexpensive nylon type of polyester nylon, that's a contradiction, but you know what I mean? It could pull, um, like the threads. So I want to just use this one. This has got nice soft clip ends. Okay. Today we're going to use this scarf from the Dollar Tree. I know it's been a while since they've been out, but you can use any long scarf. This one is 60 inches, yeah. So it's got to be at least as long as your window. And this one is going to hang over on the edges a little bit. We're going to make it jabo. So what I first want to do is take off the tag without cutting the string. And what that's going to do is allow me to make it base basically it's there but it's like disappeared okay what i have to do first for this is i have to actually uh find center on the on the scarf and then find center on my window because this particular scarf is going to hang over on both sides probably just a tiny bit like this 
but it's still going to look very, very pretty when it's all said and done. So basically you want to measure from the outside of your casing to the outside of your casing. Really, it depends on where your curtain rod hardware is. So the curtain, the curtain hooks will come in odd numbers because you're always supposed to have one in the middle, but you don't have to use all of them because if you have actually a splitting two panels, like a cafe curtain, then you'll have like five and five. So that will equal 10 or whatever it is. After doing some calculations, I'm going to use nine hooks and I'll tell you why. Um, Jimmy measured the window, as you saw, and it ended up being a lot wider than I anticipated. And if I try to stretch this, this, um, scarf over that wide expanse, it's going to balloon down and I don't want it to. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use nine hooks and nine hooks is actually easier because that's like, if you take your piece and you fold it in half and fold it in half and half again, that ends up being nine spots. So for this, he measured 45 and a quarter and we're going to round it up to 46. So I want a 23 inch which I'm gonna put a little mark on my table with a light colored pen. We're gonna use nine hooks. And as you can see, I measured, here's my mark for 23 inches. We're gonna take our curtain or our scarf in this case, and we're gonna fold it in half. And there is technically not a right sides to these scarves, but I will tell you like, they, if you look at the way they were sewn, so this one was serge and there's like this piece of fabric in the back. So that's gonna be like the wrong size. So if that makes any sense, okay? So we're gonna fold the curtain in half and I'm doing it wrong sides together, but just be mindful. Also the hooks are universal, but I like the openings to be in the back. So it's not like there's rules to it, but that's just my particular um, piece that I like. So I'm gonna put the fold on the edge of the table and I'm gonna take the hook, and I know that right sides are towards the inside of the fold. So I'm gonna clip at that mark. This is my 23 inch mark. You want the clip to go all the way onto the scarf. So I'm gonna clip the top one too. The reason we worried about how deep it goes into the scarf is because that's gonna determine how low it hangs off the curtain rod. So obviously you can't do this kind of method if you have like a curtain rod really, really close to your molding, unless you don't mind the fact that you can see your molding. Cause I don't mind the fact that I can see my molding. So now I'm gonna find center and I'm gonna put one directly in the center. This is where the fold was. Okay. Let's get all of this gathered up. I said I wanted the openings in the back, but you could see while they're before they're on the rod, they spin. So that doesn't make a difference how you hang them. And the clip itself is the same on both sides. So that doesn't make a difference either. So now we have to figure out where the rest are gonna be. So if we fold this in half, we match the clips to the clips. Now we know that a clip goes there at that fold. Make sure it gets on there really good and a clip goes on that fold. Let me make sure it goes on there. Really good. Then we're gonna do this one more time, okay? Now, if you have a super long curtain and you're doing other, um, like say 11 hooks, you'll probably have to measure, but this is a really easy way to do it with not measuring, okay? One, two, three, four, five. And then the last four will go on here. Let me just get them out of the way. So we'll start with the outside. I like to <laughs> I like to start with the outside. Of course, I dropped it. The good news is this was a pack of 12. So, so that's one. Here is two. Here is three. Come on, come on scarf, there you go. And here is four. 
And here is hook number five. Let's get all the way up there. Okay. So now if I open it up, they'll probably get caught on each other. Yep, they did. And that's okay. Normally these are not open rings like this normally they're solid rings but these were inexpensive and sometimes when you know sometimes you get what you pay for most times you do and sometimes you get stuff on clearance but most times you get what you pay for <laughs> okay there we go there's that now i want all of the openings to be towards the back and the back side of the scarf is let to see the end that has the thing on it that's the other end Currently, the back side of the scarf is towards me. Nope, it's towards you. So I will put them all on the rod with the openings towards you. Okay. And you're going to go down the scarf and do one at a time. So I was trying to make a Dollar Tree curtain rod for you guys with the grabber, you know, the hard to reach grabber thing and ping pong balls and use like command strip hooks, but I never got to it. So you're getting this instead. So if you look up at me, you'll see that they'll really move independently very, very well. But then you're thinking like, well, how do they stay? Well, that's the next trick so let's get into that part of the hack and then we'll be all done so the real trick is when you go to put the curtain rod on you basically slip the first ring on the outside of your curtain rod holder and you do that on both sides and what that does is it keeps the curtain from sliding in unnecessarily now obviously if you're doing this with drapes you don't want to go ahead and do the same thing because then you won't be able to open your drapes uh, towards the inside um, but this is just for a balance, okay? Okay, so you can make it like that, or you can make it like that, or you can tuck it entirely in the back. It's really a matter of personal preference. I like it flounced a little bit. And this is how it looks. This next hack is my favorite way to store leftover pizza. I use aluminum foil, Reynolds wrap pop-ups are actually my favorite. Uh, we created this method back in New York for big old Neapolitan style slices. You know, if you know, you know. And um, we can wrap one individual slice at a time. And what I like to do is like not, tight, not to wrap it too tightly onto the cheese layer, um, but just wrap it up. I fold a you basically put two pieces of pizza big end to small end and then wrap it loosely and then fold up the end and then we shove them all into a Ziploc bag labeled with the type of pizza they are and then they go in the freezer. Now this particular pizza leftovers are from a local gas station uh, where Jimmy used to work called Casey's. They make a breakfast pizza which is outstanding. I just have to say. Um <laughs> It doesn't have quite enough protein on there for me. So in the next part of the hack, I'll show you how I alter it a little bit. Um, but I wanted to show you this really quick. Mom gets a bacon pizza. So there's usually quite a bit of bacon left over. And Jim and I usually like the sausage pizza, which you can also get like biscuits and gravy type of pizza. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> then what I do is I write on the um, label what kind of pizza it is. We don't normally date it. Um, I will date it for you here because leftover pizza doesn't really last that long in our house. Um, but I will label it here for you. And if it does last long in your house, you want to go ahead and put the date on it as well. Then I just slide them in. You want to make sure that the pizza is at least cooled down to room temperature before you freeze it. Otherwise, you can get 
um, ice crystals build up and it's really not pleasant. You also don't want to store your pizza or bread in the refrigerator for very long because refrigerating bread tends to dry it out and make it stale, go, go stale faster. The same thing with pizza crust. Now for us, we like to reheat our pizza in the oven when it's the winter time or in the toaster or toaster oven in the summertime. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here. Just take the frozen pizza. Um, I like to just make this on toast. It's really easy in a toaster oven. Um, you could bake it in the toaster oven as well. But all I do is while it's frozen, I open the foil up. Now this method will give you a softer crust. If you like a crispier crust pizza, A, I recommend doing it in the oven. You can also do it on the on the stove top on a frying pan, but you really need to have your pizza defrosted for that. Um, but this is just frozen. Separate it, lay it out, and then we're gonna toast it. Um, it's just gonna be on toast. I know, it sounds crazy. With the Ninja Foodie is a toaster oven, air fryer, broiler, baker, dehydrator, the whole thing. I'm still just gonna put it on toast. So this is gonna be nine slices of toast on three, de three degrees of darkness. Um, but do however long your toaster um, tells you to do. Now I used to have a regular Oster or Black & Decker toaster oven that we used to just put it on the darkest toast setting. Um, it was a different time back then, you know, different appliances. Um, but that's what I like to do. I just like to take my pizza frozen, leave it on the foil, open the foil up, and then go ahead and hit toast. Now again, this leaves a soft crust. This isn't a crispy crust. For a crispy crust, how I recommend it is hit it, toasting it half with the foil and then take the foil off and toast it half without. And then you'll get a crispier crust. We, it's all right for me because I don't, I, don't, I don't like the hard crusty crust on the top of my roof of my mouth anyway. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it to its darkest setting for its eight slices of pizza and then hit start and it's going to count down from four minutes. Now this is what it looks like when it's all done. Set and done. Um, again it's done but it's not crispy. Keep that in mind. <laughs> okay but it is defrosted. The cheese is melted and the pizza is warm. Now what I'm gonna do to make it just a little bit healthier for me, how healthy is a breakfast pizza to begin with? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to scramble an egg to add to the top of it because this particular pizza is this uh, pizza crust with like a cheese gravy type sauce with um, scrambled egg, bacon or sausage, and then cheese on top. So uh, I just add a little scrambled egg to it just to make it a little more protein enriched and then I'm gonna eat it with a fork and a knife. But you do you, boo, you know how that goes. But anyway, this is the way I like to do it. If we do it in the oven, on the foil, we set the oven for 500 degrees on the pizza pan or on the foil, and you just pop it in there for like less than five minutes, okay? So here's a hack. You guys wanted to learn how to fold a fitted sheet. I'm not an expert, but I do it pretty good. So what I do is on the so you can see the inside of the sheet, basically with my hands on the right side of the sheet, I find two corners of the same side. And I put my fingers right in where they're stitched. Can you see that? Can you see that up close, Jim? I, yeah, I can see okay. it. So what I do is I match my two the two corners and I fold one hand over the other. So now I have two corners on the same hand, correct? You guys got that so far? Leaving this one in my dominant hand, I can grab stuff. You see that? Now I'm going to do the opposite corner. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the one point on the inside and one point. I'm going to meet them right here on this hand. See? So I've got the two points here and two points here. Now I've got the short side or the long side. It's hard to tell because this is a full size sheet but it's really a matter of if you're doing it by yourself or doing it with a friend. Now, you can choose to lay this down now. I wanted to show you that if you take this corner and this corresponding edge, it makes sort of a rectangle. I know it doesn't look perfectly lined on the top, but it is a rectangle. So what we do is we take our two corners that we have now, make sure all of your sheet is open flat, and then you're gonna do the same thing 
with these two corners. So what you're gonna be left with is a frumpy looking rectangle. Weird, right? But when I turn it around so that you guys can see, I'll show you guys can you see from my perspective. This edge folds flat and it almost is perfectly square there. Then I take this edge and I fold it over so that we're almost perfectly square here. Now I have almost a perfect rectangle. So I'm gonna take my perfect rectangle and I'm gonna fold it in half so that I have a long squared up rectangle. And then I'm gonna fold it again and I'm going to fold it again. So now I have a fitted sheet that is, forgive me for not having this ready, almost the same exact dimensions as my flat sheet. If you want them the exact same dimensions, that's easy. Usually your flat sheet needs to be folded in thirds at the end. Do you see that? They're almost the exact same dimensions. Then what you do is you take your folded pillowcase, you put it on top, you take your second pillowcase, open it up. I like to get it inside out a little bit with my hands in the corners. I grab the sheets and I work the pillowcase around it. And now what I have is an entire set of sheets folded into what about less than one half of a pillowcase size. Then you can tuck the end in, tuck it under, fold it up, fold it under. You can do whatever you want to store them in your closet. We keep ours here in a trunk um, and that's that. So that's a hack. So that's it everybody for these hacks. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Let me know which one was your favorite. You know how to do all the sharing and the subscribing and all the things. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.